Blessings, everyone. I am excited to share with you a little bit of my own story in how the Lord drew me really to His heart, how I initially encountered the Lord and the steps that really the Lord did to arrange everything so my heart would be ready to encounter Him. Many students at Bishop Moore I know are familiar with my vocational story of how the Lord called me to religious life, but I have not always had the opportunity to share how the Lord initially went over my heart and how I recognized in my life a, a need for God and understanding that only in Him can I find what my heart is looking for. So in this short just witness of the great things the Lord has done, I'd like to share with you as well just some of the lessons I learned along the way, hoping that these little lessons can also help you in your journey of faith. So to begin with, let me just share that I grew up in a Catholic family. I'm the fourth of five children. And faith was something that was incorporated into, into our life. We went to Mass every Sunday. I grew up loving the stories of the saints and, and Bible stories. And as a child, I would say my faith was very lively. God was very real. We would pray the rosary sometimes as a family. I loved anything to do with the faith as a small child. That was something I was passionate about. But as I became an adolescent and just involved in you know, things as adolescents do in the world and activities in school and, and friends. And I went to all public school. I never had the opportunity to go to a Catholic school. And some of the things I learned in my Catholic or in my public school contradicted some of the things that we had, I had learned in, in my faith. And, and I kind of began to question a lot of things. I wondered if the Catholic Church is really founded by Christ, if the Christianity is the, the right religion. Um, is God even real? Some of those basic questions that I know our teenagers ask as well because I have students that come to me and, and, and share their, their thoughts and their, their difficulties with me. When I was about 13, 14, so I would say 8th grade to about sophomore in high school, I call that like my questioning and my seeking phase. I had a lot of doubts and praise be to God. I actually tried to seek answers to these doubts. So that's one thing I always tell students. So lesson number one is that doubts are not necessarily bad. Doubts can be a source of grace, especially if you seek the answers. I also noticed that I wasn't particularly happy in my life. This is a grace that everyone I think at some point in their life reaches, where they realize that the things they have don't necessarily make them happy. I knew that Success and popularity, I suppose, were things that are going to make me feel satisfied. I knew money and success weren't things that made people happy. But I still recognized in my heart an aching, an emptiness, a longing. And so another lesson that I would encourage anyone who's listening is to recognize the ache in your own heart. Because what I was experiencing as an adolescent is an ache that every human heart feels at some point. And oftentimes we try to stifle that, that aching, that longing for more. We, we stifle it with noise because we don't know how to fill it up or we try to seek to fill it in things in the world, money, success. If you really think about it, that ache that we have is for something that's not going to fade, something that's everlasting. I recognize that the only way that was going to be filled was with the Lord. And again, I think that was a pure grace. Um, I also think it was through the witness of some people in my life, particularly my, my older brothers, actually. So, and they had really good Christian friends, and they were involved in Christian youth groups and going to Bible studies. And I would see my older brothers and say, they have something that I want. I said, okay, Lord, I'm going to try to find you. I'm going to seek you out. And of course, I knew how to pray as a small child, but I was like, I don't really know how to pray. I don't really know much about you, but here I go. So I remember Googling prayers um, and cutting out these random prayers and putting them in a notebook that was going to be my prayer notebook. I just began journaling and, and writing little notes to God because I didn't, for me to pray out loud or to pray in my mind was really hard and I get distracted and I couldn't focus. So I was like, well, let me let me write out what I want to say to the Lord. I was waiting for an encounter with the Lord, and it didn't happen right away. And that's something else that I would love to say to some of our youth, particularly who might be listening to this. You might be seeking the Lord and, and trying to pray and trying to do all the quote unquote right things, and you're like, but I still am missing something, or I haven't, I haven't really, I know all about Him, but I haven't really met Him yet. All I can say is hang on, keep persevering, 
The Lord's timing is perfect. There's a scripture passage in Galatians that says that in the fullness of time, Jesus became incarnate. And St. Thomas Aquinas says that fullness of time is that moment in history where um, it wasn't that God waited so long that his people reached a point of, of desperation and total despair, but it wasn't so early in the history of humanity that his people would not appreciate the gift of a savior, that they would recognize their need for a savior and treasure that all the more. There's a moment where you, God just steps in because he knows he can't he wait too long and get to the point of despair, but if he does it too early, you will not appreciate the gift or recognize the need and the longing for a savior. So for me, it was a few years of, of deeply seeking and searching and kind of even wondering like, Lord, where are you? Why aren't you here? Why aren't you, 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 you stepping in and showing me who you are? I've, see, I've seen you work in the life of some of my family members. Where are you in, in my own life? And I was recently watching a little short clip, a little video, and in the little video, the girl's blind. And she is trying to do things on her own, like get dressed by herself. Um, she's a young girl, so she was trying to like do her own hair, put on her makeup and things like that. And, and, and in her mind, in her, her blindness, she feels like her dad has, has abandoned her, that he can't, she can't see him. And she's calling out to him. He doesn't seem to be you know, doing her hair for her or helping her pick out the outfit that she was going to wear for school. And then it kind of goes to the scene of the perspective of the father. And you kind of see that in the background, the dad is setting up the clothes in such a way that she'll find it really easily. And he's, he's arranging all of her hair products so that she can figure it out by herself. But she had to struggle through that. So it was like behind the scenes, the dad is already making all the arrangements so that she can be successful. And I kind of felt like that's what the Lord was doing in my life during that time of my, my seeking and wanting to know him. He was putting all the right people, but putting um, different circumstances all in the right order that I could receive it. But I didn't necessarily feel his presence. So it wasn't until I was about a junior in high school that I would say I had a real encounter with the Lord and I was able to go to a Steubenville conference. I know many of our students have also had that opportunity to go to Steubenville. A couple things impacted my heart while I was there. First, the witness of young people. So where I grew up, uh, we didn't have a very, a very active parish. It was a beautiful parish, but just youth-wise was not particularly active. I grew up in a predominantly Protestant area. So I didn't have a lot of really good just Catholic influence in my life, but I loved the Catholic Church. And so when I saw Steubenville of thousands of teenagers who were wanting to know the Lord and you know praising the Lord and had their hands had hands raised and you know running up and talking to priests and religious, my heart was just like, oh, these are my people. They exist. <laughs> like the church is alive. And then the other beautiful moment was during, there's a time of adoration and they bring the Lord and the Blessed Sacrament around in a monstrance. And, and I can still remember like as if it was yesterday where I was and where, where the, the priest was with the monstrance and just the, the incense and, and the song that was playing actually even. And, and as the, the priest stepped around the corner with the Lord and the monstrance, it was just this realization of, oh my gosh, that's him. I had always known, you know, just from head knowledge that the Eucharist is the body and blood of Jesus. But to really encounter him in that moment as, as if it was like 2,000 years ago and I'm walking along the Sea of Galilee and there's the Lord, it was a moment like that where I was like, that's, that's Jesus, that's him, that's the one I've been seeking for, the one I've been longing for, the one I've been calling out for. He didn't say anything profound in my heart. It was just this realization that God is present and alive in the Catholic Church, and that's where I want to be. And I left that retreat um, on fire for my faith, very, I could say, uh, affirmed in my, my seeking and wanting now even more, and knowing that God was guiding me and, and directing me. When I went off to college, I knew to very quickly to get involved in the campus ministry at my university, which was such a source of grace and, and more a deepening in the maturity of my faith life. And I am so grateful to the Lord just for putting all those pieces in place that I might encounter His love in such a simple and such a beautiful way. This is the first of my many encounters with the Lord. I have a lot of other stories of the Lord's 
stepping in and just assuring me of his presence and, and showing me his will in my life. Um, but I hope this short little story spoke something to your heart. Just to recap, I want to summarize some of the main, the main points that I, I hope will be a little signpost for your own life. The first one is to recognize the longing in your own heart. So we have a lot of noise in our culture, a lot of things that prevent us from being in touch with the longings and the desires of our heart. And I would just encourage you to, to seek moments of silence, to ask profound questions like, what am I longing for? What do I really want in life? And is what I am doing right now obtaining that? We all have a longing for something infinite. And when we are in touch with that longing, it's kind of the beginning of the Lord even being able to work in our hearts. The second one is to find witnesses. So in my own life, my older brothers were a powerful witness in, in me wanting more and me recognizing the longing in my own heart. Being at Catholic school, being at Bishop Moore, you have many witnesses, many teachers, many alumni, many other students, a whole department campus ministry who, who want to help you, who are trying to, to put things in place that you may encounter the Lord. Find somebody that you can go to and share your faith, your struggles, someone who can guide you along the way. And the last one is, you know, God does the arranging. So trust that even if you cannot see him, he is there and he's putting things in place and to persevere in your seeking him out. You have a school that's number one mission is to help you to make your faith your own. So if there's anything I could just encourage you with my whole heart, it would be not to take the gift of Bishop Moore Catholic for granted, to use all the resources there to seek God and to find him. He's there. He's with you the entire time, whether you recognize him or not. In fact, he is the one seeking you out. So allow yourself to be encountered by him. Know that I pray for you and that I would love to have conversations of faith with you. If you're at a point where you're seeking your faith and you would love some answers, I'll do my best to walk with you, to accompany you, and to help prepare you for that fullness of time moment when you encounter the Lord.